Glenda DeVries is a wife, mother, grandmother, and she helps people to connect with God as the pastor of care and recovery at Compass Point Bible Church, right behind us here in Burlington. What I didn't know until she spoke right here in our chapel this fall is that Glenda has had a long and difficult journey to freedom herself. And Glenda, we could not have picked a better time to have you. This is a difficult time for those prone to depression. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we just, we've just got through the holiday season and for some people, although it's a wonderful time to celebrate, it can be the worst of time for people. Mm -hmm. And just starting a new year again and if people are struggling and they're working through issues, going into a new year can be um, almost with fear and dread because they're anticipating some of those things that, that, that are ahead of them. So it can be a great time of the year, but it can be a very desperate time of the year for lots of people. And the shorter days, the lack of sun, some struggle with Absolutely. seasonal affective disorder. Mm -hmm. Interesting that that spells sad. Yeah. So we are here to inject yeah. hope. I said, I've highlighted everything about your journey because it, it was such a learning experience for me. Mm -hmm. But the first thing you say, Glenda, is that depression is very complex. Mm -hmm. You're not suggesting that everything you're going to share should be everyone else's experience, either in the problem or the recovery. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. I think that there can be many factors that can um, that can cause depression. And I think that even as you're recovering out of it, there are many different things that can help you and that can be a support. It, it's not just black and white. It's, it's not cut and dry. Now, there are things that underlie uh, everyone's symptoms. Uh, you had insecurity as a friend mm -hmm. from early childhood, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Moira, as long as I can remember at some level, I, I was battling this inner dialogue in my head that I was, in, in, I felt insecure, I felt less than, I was always struggling with what other people thought of me, always trying to measure up to something, but I wasn't quite sure what that was. So there was a lot of fear-based thinking. And at some level, I think I struggled with that most of my life. And when you are in that place where you're, you're struggling with, with fear and um, just wondering what people are expecting of you and things like that, and you just don't have a, a measure of confidence, if you're in that place for a long time, eventually it, it pulls you down. Now, did, what was your view of God at this time? Well, at that time, I did believe in God. In fact, I don't ever remember a time not believing in God, but he was distant. You know, I sort of had a lot of information. I knew that Jesus was God's son. I knew that Jesus died on the cross, but I didn't really understand what that meant for me personally. You know, I believed in God, but I really didn't know him. And I, at some level, I, I think I had a hunger to know him, but I wasn't really quite sure how to how to bridge that. Okay. Now this insecurity, I, I'm going to quote you here because uh, I know that we have people watching right now who echo this, waking up in the morning and not wanting to be awake. Mm -hmm. That deep a pit. Mm -hmm. I got to the point, Moira, where, where I really didn't want to live. Now I had suicidal thoughts. I certainly didn't have a plan, so I don't know that I was actually suicidal. But I would wake up in the morning and just not want to be awake because I didn't want to face life. I didn't want to continue living that way because the, the hopelessness and the despair was, was that, that was just where I was at. I mean, I had um, two children and, you know, a husband who loved me and, and cared for me, but I just felt numb inside. And I would try to rationalize that and think, why am I feeling this way? I have so much to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't break through it. I just couldn't break through it. So initially your response wasn't to get help. It, it was to cover it up. Mm -hmm. you, you wore the mask of everything's Absolutely. fine. Absolutely. And I strived within myself to be happy. I tried to do the things I thought would, would make me happy or help me to break through this. That often and spells busyness. A busy, absolutely. Just being busy. Absolutely. And outwardly, most people 
didn't know that I was struggling internally. And I mean, it even got to the point where it took a lot for me to even talk to my husband about it eventually. So I got very good at wearing the mask, but inside I was very broken. And What led you to get help? Because you did finally go to your own mm -hmm. doctor, your I family did. doctor. Mm -hmm. I did. Well, it, it was just that point of coming to an end of myself. I knew that I couldn't keep living that way. And I just, I was at the point where I, would, I just felt like I could sleep 24-7. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I, I just couldn't exist like that anymore. So I did go to my doctor. I eventually went to see a counselor and a psychiatrist. And I was on medication for a while. And you say those antidepressants gave you hope for the first time. Absolutely. There was initially yeah. help yeah. in that. Yeah, and, and it was wonderful because before that, there, it didn't matter what I did, nothing was helping. And so initially the medication did help. It, the doctor said, you know, in a couple of weeks you'll feel better, and I did. And so I had hope. You were at eight pills a night. Mm -hmm. Was that to sleep? Mm -hmm. No, it, that was the antidepressant. I was taking up to eight pills a night yeah. because I just, although it did help initially, I kept crashing. And I, it felt like I was walking on thin ice and I didn't know when I was gonna crash through. Fall right through. And I remember getting to the point thinking, how many pills am I going to have to take in order to maintain, um, you know, just, just that peace of mind? Now you say you tried to read your Bible. Mm -hmm. I, I really, that word just popped up at me because in talking with many people who've struggled with depression, mm -hmm. this can be very challenging. Reading mm -hmm. at all mm -hmm. can be a challenge. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It was hard to focus. Um, but there was, there was something within me. I mean, I know now in looking back that it was God, but I just, I, I began to have more of a hunger for God. I, had, I, I began to have more of a desire to really find out who He was and what, and what the truth was. So simultaneously, although I was, you know, looking for help through my doctor and, and so on, I was also seeking God. And it was around that time that I reconnected with a friend of mine from school and she told, she invited me to a Bible study and that is when I started to get some answers and she really began to support me. But Moira, that's when I began watching 100 Huntley Street. Uh -huh. And I can remember laying on the couch and just feeling absolutely depressed. And I would listen to people share their stories. You didn't believe them? No, I was very skeptical. I, I remember in my head thinking, is this real? You know, are they just making this up? Do they pay them to say this? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, those were some of the thoughts going through my head. But This is 20 years ago. Yeah, th this, 20 was, years this ago. was 20 years ago. Yeah. And you trusted enough to pray with David Maines. I did. Mm -hmm. More Did, than once. More than once. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What was the result of that? Well, a combination of that and, as I said, my friend who I'd reconnected with, I began to go to a women's Bible study. And even just listening to the program, some of the answers were, were some of the questions I had were being answered through, through those areas. And I began to, to know God. I, I came into that place where he wasn't just so distant anymore. I began to have that relationship with him, and that gave me hope. That gave me hope that has never left Moira. Mm -hmm. And even though I had that initial hope when I started taking medication, this is a hope that has, has never left. And I began to believe, do you know what? I think God is going to help me get through this depression. Mm -hmm. I began to have faith in God that He was going to help me uh, overcome it. And I wanted an instantaneous quick fix. Mm -hmm. I believed that God could do that, but that is not what happened. Not for you. It has been a journey. It, it has been a journey of learning to walk with God. And, and, and one of the key things that God has helped me is to identify some of the lies that were going on in my head. You heard a term that was a bit of a, a wake-up call, mm -hmm. spiritual 
warfare, spiritual mm -hmm. battle. Someone mm -hmm. said, you are in a spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. And uh, you had to discern which voice is God's and which voice, voice is the father of lies. That's right. What kinds of things had you been hearing and believing from the father of lies? Just a lot of negative self-talk. You know, you're stupid, you're dumb, you're not as good as someone else, you're not going to make it. I mean, even those, even those thoughts coming into my head, like, just give up. What's the point? You know, mm -hmm. if life's going to be like this, what's the point of living?